some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brad and I are continuing the top 100 games of all time for 2022. This is 90 through 81. Uh, if you haven't seen our first video on uh, the 101 to 91, go check that out. There were some great games talked about there, uh, and even better games uh, on this segment. Um, let's see. Let me let me check where I am at for 90 through 81. I have three new ones on this list, and most rows, so that's good. I have I have one brand new game to the list, but I have a couple that were out of the top 100 that moved in, and they rose up. Cool, yeah. cool. So you have some that rose this segment. I have four rise, one new, and five that fell. I have three rows, uh, two fell, and then the three that are new. Yep. If that's does that does that math out? One, know. two, three. That's three new, three rows. That's six. Two fell. That's eight. I'm not looking at the right numbers. So we'll just go ahead and go uh go on. So <laughs> with my number my number ninety, which is uh kicking things off great with uh a new one on the list. Uh this is actually one that is by Roxley Games that I was very surprised that they ever I mean, I guess they did Dice Throne, so I shouldn't be surprised that they did this, but I guess I was surprised at how good it was because this is a theme that I usually don't get behind. But if they do it this way, I'm a lot more intrigued and I don't know why. And that is Radlands. So Radlands is a post-apocalyptic 1v1 card game um, set in a – did I say post-apocalyptic? Yeah. Um, I should I should stress that for some weird reason, but it's that neon like kind of psychedelic post apocalyptic. Think like Rage Two, um, but don't think too much on that game because that game sucked. Uh, and it's uh, it, you're basically playing as um a gang. Obviously, it's always rival gangs in these in these kinds of uh, you know, themes. But you are utilizing really high tech powers um and members of a clan so special abilities on those and uh water is the main resource on this so you're kind of the main goal is for you to try and um destroy i think three of your opponents like bases so you have like three bases and then you're playing cards in front of them as like members of your gang uh this this picture is not quite showing but like uh I have like the play mat for it, which is really nice that like, so you have events that are timed events. So you can actually play those and eventually they will come to fruition. Um, each base has like a special ability on it that you are utilizing in your strategy to try and fight off your opponent. It's uh it's one that took, took me by surprise on kind of how solid it was. And uh, each time I've played this, I've tried doing where it's just, you're just dealt bases at random um but you can also do a draft variant and if i'm not mistaken uh i want to say that you fight in lanes um of let's see yeah i can't remember if if you're actually fighting straight down your lanes like in um netrunner or mm -hmm. something like that, or a lot of games where it has like those lanes, but like I think that's the case, uh, because it is a you know uh, three column style game. What's also very weird about this is the cards are multi use. They have an icon at the top left, but also you can play the card itself, and you share a deck. So similar to Memoir Forty Four, where players are sharing a deck, you do the same here, but it does it didn't bother me in this one. I don't know why. Like, I could not tell you why it bothers me in Memoir, but it doesn't bother me here. I think it's the multi-use cards that where it's like if you're drawing, then it's not like uh, it just it's for some reason evened out a little bit better. I don't know. But but yeah, it's a uh, it's high production. The game stores extremely well. I don't know if they plan on supporting it at all. It'd be cool if they did just for more content. But yeah, this is a very solid 1v1 game. All right. Yeah, it looks cool. I just never I have a bunch of one on one v one games, so mm -hmm. let's dive into this one. It's one that um, 
yeah, because these skirmish style one v one card games, especially, it's like you can only have so many. And this is one I decided to keep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, my number ninety is a more it's a more grandiose, bigger version um, than this one, and it's a uh, anniversary edition is what I put on here, just because it has okay. all the extra bells and whistles to it. Um, and it's a great cooperative game. You can play it competitively, but I don't ever do that. And that is a touch of evil. Okay. Tenth anniversary edition. You can play this. Did you say competitively? Yes, there is a competitive <laughs> to it. But yeah, it's dumb. So, um, but yeah, so uh, this one is. I play it solo a lot just because it's not super, uh, you know, super difficult to do. But pretty much, you you are in a village. The whole board is like this map of this village, and you have your hero. And there's going to be a big bad guy that you're trying to go around and find clues about and try to find them and kill them before they kill you or finish off what their um, objective is. Um, the the uh, anniversary edition has those big plastic minis for the locations that didn't have those before. It was just that board and stuff. So it kind of gives it a little bit of table presence um, and everything. But this is one of those. It's a flying frog game. You know, it's going to be a roll to move kind of thing. Um like a lot of theirs are, it's kind of an experience kind of game. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, especially if you if you get some of the um, expansions to this, you just set the boards next to this board, so it kind of stretches it out. You can get some big old boards going. But, um, but yeah, I mean, this one is, uh, it's a, kind of one of those fun, if you've like, it, it's, put it this way, if you, if you like flying frog games, you like this, they all kind of have that same feel. Whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, your it's outlandish stuff happening, you know, there's the realistic photographic art that's cheesy yeah. as well, but but you know, it has its it has its uh merits, you know. Some people they like a, some people don't. They have a shtick and they've stuck to it. Right, until Shadows of Brimstone. I think that that's yes, the that's only, their game only that they, one I, that they have like art, I think. Right, right. But um, but yeah, this is a good one, and you know, as you can see back there in the back, there's like those plastic bust minis that are mm. back there, you know. So, so uh, it just it, and you can play the expansions with this. Like the only thing it really added was was those three D, you know, plastic minis and stuff like that. It didn't really. So the expansions don't need to be the anniversary edition to play with this either. Oh, okay, they, it all matches up and everything and card art and all that stuff um this just comes with some plastic tokens and the minis and stuff like that it's you know but it's in their really big boxes like what they did with fortune and glory and stuff like that so but yeah uh, this is this is a fun one if you uh you know we i try to play it at least a couple times a year generally just like around halloween and stuff yeah. like that. it's a it's like a, a fun, halloween fun game. game yeah yep cool Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I, uh, I think I tried this one time at um, Gen Con a few years back, and it kind of like confirmed. I was like, you know what, this isn't for me. Yeah, yeah. It's so weird though because it's like we're willing to accept like roll the move if it's an older game, but I actually got a Kickstarter in not too long ago that actually had roll the move, and I was like, this sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a like super dated mechanism and they changed it to where it's like some characters use a different d like different dice right and right. i'm like it doesn't fucking matter like a d10 and a d6 i can still roll a one each time it was bad it was bad because they also had a directional die because you mm -hmm. were supposed to be lost in the woods so like if you roll a 10 <laughs> you still might not be going in the direction you want it's like no no nope Yep. Anyway, needless <laughs> to say, that game is not in my top 100. Right. Oh, and this one was uh, 104 last year. So this was one oh, of the ones. Okay. That in. rose. Nice. Yep. Nice. All right. Well, my number 89 also rose last year. It was 103 in 2021. So it actually kind of similar to this one. It rose a little bit, rose 14 spaces. And in 2020, it was 98. 
So it's actually slightly higher, uh, which is actually kind of weird because I do enjoy this game quite a bit that it's weird that it was barely in the top 100 in 2020 and even fell out in 21. Uh, and I'm curious, I think it's because this game has received two expansions that have kind of, I, I wouldn't say fixed, but at least helped like for certain because I think you ended up liking this game slightly better on the expansions, but still not a game that you particularly enjoy. Um, unless I'm wrong and you're, it's going to be a closet top 10 for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so my number 89 is uh, Res Arcana by old Tom Lehman. Uh, and like I said, this game has uh, released, <laughs> released two expansions since uh, its debut. And this one is just, I mean, I, I enjoy the art quite a bit, but this is a virtually themeless game. It didn't have to be fantasy. It could be literally whatever. It is a engine style game where you are utilizing a deck of eight cards to basically figure out how they synergize together and get 10 points. I want I to say that, 10 points. I think that sounds um, right. I, I think with one of the expansions, you have to get 11 uh, let me check. Let me check real quick. Yep. Uh, check victory points. If you have 10 or more, you win. Um, <clears throat> which And this game is very unique to me anyway, in the sense that I don't like pure engine building games, because usually my analogy is uh, is like, you know, if you have an engine for a car, you could be like, that's cool, but I'd like to have it in the car. So it's like I like engine right. buildings in or engines in games that I can utilize for a bigger purpose. Um, and because uh, there was a game that came out that everyone really liked called Furnace, uh, which was a fine engine builder game. It was like a gateway engine builder. Nothing really wrong with it. It's just that that's all it was. You just did it to generate money. And. I think this just has more going on. Like you're utilizing a lot of your cards for special abilities to turn different types of resources into other types of resources to then buy those monuments that have special abilities or victory points. Um, it's, it's just really solid for me. And then the expansions added a little bit more mitigation because in the base game, you're opening eight cards because there's no draft. You're just dealt eight and you you're supposed to look through it you know ahead of time to figure out kind of what it does um but you could still get cards that literally do nothing uh for you you can get like dragon cards that you can't play or that you can't use in any way and the the first expansion added to where you can basically turn any card into like a dragon style card or so you can mitigate and make use of those um if I'm not mistaken, I think he's actually working on a third expansion. Uh, but I could just be pulling that out of my ass. But yeah, the the two, the first expansion I would almost say is a must. Um, and the second one just gives you more ways to get victory points. I think that's what increases how many victory points you need. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This one just really works for me. I enjoy it quite a bit. I've only ever played this at two. And I think that's where its sweet spot is. I have no interest in playing with more just because there's not enough player interaction to warrant um, like a three or four player game. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I played this, I hated it. Um, but the expansion that did make it a an average game for me, for yeah. sure. Just having that mitigation of stuff. Right. Right. So there you go. There you go, folks. The expansion makes you not hate the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my number 89 is one that's been on my list for as long as we've been doing this. Um, it's kind of made its biggest fall this time, though, just because it hasn't hit the table as much because it was 41 and 39 and 50. Now it's 89, so it dumped, okay. dumped quite a bit. Not because the game's bad. It's just because it's just not hitting the table. And that is seasons. Mm, yeah. Um, I feel like we played this last year, though. We did. It was last I mean, year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a year ago. Whoa, so recent. Well, and that's probably why it was 50 last year, because it hasn't been played. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is one of those games, you know, it's... it's Obviously, they're done with it, so there's, I think, two expansions that came out for it that had more cards and other little mechanics and stuff, but pretty much the theme is of this is you are a wizard, and you're trying to be the best wizard, 
um, in this valley of stuff. And, and it brings in a lot of, um, oh, the card play is what makes this game interesting. There is the dice drafting part um, because at the very beginning of the game, you're going to get these cards and you do this, like, I'd say like a seven wonders kind of draft where you keep passing around and you're going to keep taking cards. And then after you went through all those cards, then you need to figure out, okay, these are the three that are going to be in my hand to start the game. And then at, when the next year starts, I'm going to get these the other three put in my hand. And then the third year. So you need to kind of make sure you're not putting in game cards in your hand early so that they don't mm -hmm. sit there. You kind of have to think about that as well. Um, uh, but then the beginning of each deal, you're, uh, somebody's going to roll the dice and then you do a dice draft and there's different symbols on the dice that'll do different things. Um, whether it's getting your energy, getting more, um, uh, victory points or power or whatever, um, a draw a card, different junk like that. Um, and you also pick, pick them to grab those symbols because you get those little round tokens that go on the top of your board that are used as currency to play the cards that you're going to put down. Um, mm -hmm. there's two kinds of cards. There's the spells and then there's familiars, um, all which do different things. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you just play through three years. Um, and if you can see on the board in the middle, there, those little white things are certain, certain elements are more valuable in different seasons when you try to sell them. Cause you, there's a transmutation, uh, symbol too, that lets you sell those things. So if you want to make a lot of, uh, victory points, you sell them when they're the hottest, you know, you know, cause, mm -hmm. um, but this is just one of those, there's a ton of cards in this game. I haven't even touched all the cards. Um, and there's, How they, many they expansions what, are there? There's two or three, but, um, okay. But the thing with it is though, is like when you get the game, they actually tell you these, like the difficulty of the cards. So like you can play it, you know, gateway style with just the basic level one cards and still get the same kind of a game. It's just there's a lot of text and a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. You get up into the upper levels. But uh, this is one of those that I've played it, you know, two, three, and four. I They all pretty much play pretty similar, you know, because the dice, the amount of dice you roll depends on player count. So it really doesn't yeah. affect a whole lot. Some of the cards are, are based, like, maybe be more powerful if there's more players because it's like stealing it, stealing energy from each player, you know, so those yeah. cards are more, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of ways to get points in this and uh, it's, it's a pretty solid game. Yeah. This one is one that I did not like upon first play. And then I got into magic a few years later and then I played this again a few years later and it improved my, Viewpoint. My view on magic helped with uh, understanding how these card synergies work, um, but it's a uh, it's still not one that I'm like running out to play a whole lot. But, but yeah, all right. My number eighty eight. Uh, whew, Rose last year from last year it was 89 so it went up one that's that's what <laughs> Which, mine's doing my my next one was 89 last year and went up to 88 <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> yeah i mean uh which is funny because i think yeah i made this list before i actually played the expansion and the expansion for it too um Although I think this was Rado's number one of 2021, which blows my mind. At least that's what it says on the box. But this is a very solid, uh, deceptively serious um, cooperative game about making movies. And that is Roll Camera, the filmmaking board game. So this cover and all the art on the cards make this and this theme really makes it seem like it's kind of like a whimsical party style game but it's a pretty tactile dice placement uh cooperative game uh the overall goal is for you to make either a so bad it's good movie or uh, a great movie and you have um over on the right you have basically the track of kind of like how how good your movie is and by the end of the game, you are supposed to, uh, once you have five scenes shot, 
that marker needs to be out of the pink and there's a range that is like if you're in that pink then you lose uh but you have a pretty decent um like leeway of like the top of like making a good movie uh to get out of the pink and you only have one spot at the very bottom of a so bad it's good movie uh to get out of the pink but there's lots of ways for it's like if you if you're increasing the quality then you have more give and take of like losing quality where you're still out of the pink but if you're at the very bottom it's harder for you to maintain that um but yeah like everyone plays a role of a someone in the film industry with special dice powers <clears throat> and yeah i mean overall it's a very simple to understand game but what's super weird is it has this style this like this air of whimsy that the game play does not you know uh it does not back up like all the idea cards which are those yellow cards at the bottom they're all hilarious like the flavor text in this is hilarious the problem cards which are up at the top the red cards those are those are also funny uh so yeah i mean this one just took me by surprise i enjoy it quite a bit the expansion that i just played is called the b movie expansion where you're making a b movie and it um not the b movie you're making a b movie <laughs> and uh it just adds a lot more like more ideas more problems more scenes so if you like this game then the expansion is just going to give you more of that and yeah this one's just incredibly solid yeah it looks interesting i've never never had any interest in it just by the box cover but you know yeah i uh on their expansion for the um the B movie, I got the Kickstarter version of the previous, and uh, the box is actually like a clapper. Oh yeah, cool. yeah. So although it's cardboard, so I'm actually a little upset that like the hinge is not like metal. I didn't expect yeah. the whole box to be metal, but it's like this feels like it's gonna tear at some point. Yeah, but it's neat. Like I think the director, not the director the designer uh i think the designer is actually a filmmaker like so and i don't know there's just a lot of a lot of charm and a lot of like heart put into this game and you can definitely tell and i i personally appreciate the fact that it's a serious uh, not serious but like it's a actually fun you know strategic dice worker placement game not worker placement dice placement game right because like I think uh, Portal Games just released like a party style game called Million Dollar Script, where it's like you're supposed to improv a movie idea. And it's like, and that's perfectly fine. And this game has that kind of idea. Because at the end of the game, after you shoot your five scenes, you're supposed to tell a story. Not really a story, but kind of like you're supposed to talk about what your movie is, utilizing the scenes. Almost like uh, Call to Adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, but this game's good. So you... uh. It's just fun. Like the the theme overall theme has that lightness to it, but yeah, the game is pretty serious. All right. Well, my number eighty eight was eighty nine last year as well. Cool. Um, and I could see it keep growing the more I try to get it played. I've only played it once this last time because it's just one of those that just had to hit the table a whole lot. It's a newer mm-hmm. game. Um, I don't know if you've played this one yet or not, but um, okay. It's made by the same people that made like um, Lorenzo El Magnifico and I can't remember the other one, but okay. that is Coimbra. No, I haven't played it. It's on my yeah. shelf though. Yeah, this is this is a, I really enjoy this one. Um, you can definitely tell the because um, you haven't ever played Lorenzo either, have you? Lorenzo El Magnifico. Okay, you can definitely tell they're the same designer just because of some of the mechanics are similar. But in this game, um, and I'll just go ahead because it's pretty colorful there. But uh, it's also upside so, down, huh? It's also upside down. It is. But um, <laughs> so like, anyway. no, the game is that way. You play backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but anyway, you pretty much you have your own little uh, player board and everything, and there's all those dice of multicolors down there. So what happens is all those dice roll at once. Um, you're gonna draft them by color or by number to start with because that's what their first use is going to be for them 
So if you see up there at the top right or down here at the bottom left, there's these little like castle things. Those, yeah. you, when you draft a dice, you place that dice in that and then place it over on this track over here. Okay. And that's that shows that that green five is the red players, you know, and everything. So oh, okay. what happens, there's all these cards that are over here on the top uh, over here. So each one of these tracks, people are going to put your their dice that they draft there and the and highest number there gets first choice of buying those cards because hmm. um, there's going to be there's going to be uh, one card. I believe it's one card less than the number of people. I want to say I can't remember that exactly. But, but anyway, so what happens, though, is each one of those cards has different could have an automatic effect plus a, you know, a, a long term effect. But when you do that, if you place a six there, that the value of that card is six of whatever the symbol is in the top corner. So you have to be willing to pay that resource to do that. So, you know, it's, it's kind of tricky when you do that because you want, you want to be the first person to pick, but then you're mm -hmm. also making it more, pay more. Yeah. right. There's okay. also modifiers that you'll pick up throughout the game that <clears throat> can go on your dice that may make your dice plus two or plus three, which is great. You make, get your first pick, but you're just still going to have to pay that much more. Mm. Um, but then, so after you do those dice in that track, then that dice comes back to your player board. And then there's a round of the game that you actually, the color matters because then whatever dice you have in color on your player board and you score where you are on that color track. So there's certain things you're going to do that's going to move you up these tracks. I see. So if you're like on the five right here in purple and you have a purple dice, then when you're going to score three points, oh, you know, okay. so I mean, there's, the dice have multiple things going on, you know, like, they're for purchasing, but then they're also for currency or whatever those the tracks do. Um, there's also kind of like this little deal in here that you'll be able to send certain actions. You'll be able to send your little work uh, people out and about, and you gain you can claim those tokens and stuff. There's there's a lot of stuff going on in this, but um, mm -hmm. it's it's a it's really solid, and and I still like Lorenzo better just because it seems to be more. It's a little more tight, I think. Okay. But, uh, but this one's still really fun for what it is. It's definitely worth a worth a play. Nice. Yeah, this is definitely one that's on my like this. This would be I feel like right in my wheelhouse. I can't think of any reason why I would not like this game. Right. Um, I just haven't gotten to the table yet. Yep, yep. All right. Good deal. My. Number uh, 87 is one of the few that fell that's on the segment. Uh, not too much. It fell 70, not 76 spots. It was number 76 last year, so it fell 11 spots. And in 2020, it was 66. So it's been, damn, if it was, if this was number 86, it would have fallen 10, 10 spaces each year. <laughs> But alas, it did not. Uh, and this is a wonderfully thematic cooperative game. Uh, I actually played this this year, um, showing it to a buddy. And this is just one of those kind of lighter but really atmospheric cooperative games. And that is Subterra. Uh, this is the only game of Subterra name that will ever be released because Subterra 2 will never come out. Yeah. Uh, I think I feel for the guy. Oh, I, I shouldn't feel for the guy because he mismanaged the money uh, or the 2020 COVID shipping stuff fucked him over. Um, but anyway, Subterra is about uh, spelunking. You play as a particular person. You have a persona of like a medic or a exterminator or something like that that is in a cave system and you're trying to weave your way through this cave uh like and it's tile placement so like the cave layout is going to be different every single time and you're just trying to find the exit in the base game you're just trying to find the exit there's expansions that change your overall goal right. but yeah so as you're going through you have a kind of like an event deck of like hazardous terrain of gas coming out rocks um cave-ins uh earthquakes um poisonous gas and then monsters so this one uh it's just it's really atmospheric, especially because it's just so easy for you to put yourself in that mindset. If you've ever seen the movie The Descent, like that helps a lot. If you just imagine that you're in this dark 
you know, cave, not having any clue of, you know, how to get out. It's, it's just really good. And like, not everyone has to survive. I think you have like a arbitrary score at the end for how well you do, but uh, to win really only one person has to make it out. And they just do such a cool idea with that event deck of when it runs out, it's not like you immediately lose. It's just your battery on your flashlights dying. So every round you have to roll a die. And I want to say it's a five or six. I think there, yeah, yeah, it's five or six. Yeah, for you to keep going. If you roll a five or six, then you can keep playing. And it's always down to the wire. I've had a game where, like, I'm just running because there's monsters chasing me, and I'm just running in a straight line, like just trying to make it, just rolling, it, and I'm just like rolling fives and sixes in a row. And it just has that really awesome end of a horror movie kind of feel where all the monsters are chasing you and cavens are happening and you're just like <laughs> then, like because you could do that and then just come across a fucking dead end and it's like i think i'll just kill myself yeah so again awesome cooperative game and it does so much with just so little like those those little meeples and then like this isn't a gaudy game at all even though it but it, the the theme and the way the game plays out just really amplifies it, which is nice. Like, because sometimes we get these games where it's like high production value, and you're like, I didn't get anything out of this. Yeah. So yeah, I I'd be surprised if it ever fell off of my list. There's a game that came out last year called The Night Cage, and while the theme and the art is really cool, like it has like that kind of KDM style grotesque um art uh and it utilizes a candle system where you can only see like a certain um amount of tiles where you're currently at it had the same same kind of feel so like when i was talking to them at gen con last year i was like oh yeah this is cool i have subterra i don't need this um so it's kind of like pick your poison really on which one you're getting they're both going to give you a different kind of i uh like a similar feel right yeah that's my number 87 subterra good choice my number 87 is an a game that has risen onto this list um mainly because it's gotten played a little bit because my wife likes it um it was it went from 102 to 111 to 107 to 87 so it jumped 20 spots up into the deal um and i have all the little expansions for it it's a nice simplistic city building game it's loosely and that is Ice oh, okay. City. Um, this is one of those Artipia you... games, huh? Yeah, Artipia and AG. Yeah, um, but uh, it's just it's one of those games. Everybody has a big board. It's it's this huge board, grid board that has colored rows and dice number. Um, as you can see, dice numbers at the top, colors at the down the left side um you're going to start off with certain buildings that are just your regular ones that everybody has so what you're going to do is you have these everybody has you know yellow white red blue and black dice so when you choose to roll one of those you have to place it on the grid or when you roll them you place it on the grid where they fall so like three yellow falls you know oh, all that yeah. stuff but you can you gain gold for certain deals and then you can purchase cards like that's there in the middle. You can upgrade certain spots and try to make your city more uh, valuable. You get more stuff, you know, like some, some of the things you may like overlay those cards. Uh, they cover like, like the, cards the initial, and... like the initial board has, they're just part of the board and then you just set the cards on top of them. Okay. So you are uh, kind of city building. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're you're trying to maximize it's almost kind of a weird um i don't want to say reverse machi koro in a way i mean i was like, gonna say how does this differ from like space base or machi koro it's, it's a grid it's instead just, of a line yeah and i think it's just because you are you're buying stuff and actually covering up and then certain things file like like um some of those boards have like multiple let's say the blues you know like so one of the blue blues may be like score all of your whatever the blue cards are okay. you know so you're trying to just balance it out and make it stuff but the expansions add more stuff like different resources different cards um like gold gets introduced in the first expansion because it's called all the glitters and all that stuff and mm -hmm. 
it's a it's a simplistic game, but my wife loves playing it. It gets to the table, and it's a fun little short game that that's uh you just kind of run through, you know. And okay. it's 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 a oh, it's a, a decent one. There's a lot of expansions. Yeah, yeah, I, I have. Know, all I guess the stuff three. For it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but it's a, it's, right, a cool. it's a fun simple one. Nice, nice. All right. My number 86, uh, Rose, uh, last year, apparently last year, it didn't even make it in the top 100. Uh, it was 131 last year. So it rose 45 spots, uh, which is actually very weird uh, to me that it wasn't on the list last year because I enjoy this game quite a bit. Maybe I've just played it more since then. Uh, and it is a polyomino style game, which I am just super fond of like that's kind of one of my favorite genres is polyominoes um and uh this actually rose a very strange sequel uh that i haven't played yet but this one is in the <laughs> hall of the mountain king by burnt island games uh yeah so like i said this is a polyomino game where you are utilizing different shapes to delve deeper into the into the mountain so it's harder to get into the mountain, but it yields more points. And you're trying to basically get um, like shrines on pedestals for another way of scoring victory points. Uh, the really cool uniqueness of this game, actually, yeah, there's there's a, an example of kind of how it looks, and you have those, um, uh, yeah, you have those little circles on. Um, on the tiles that I believe, if I'm not mistaken, utilize where the shrines can go. And you can also, if you delve deeper uh, into the mountain and uh, create a certain pattern of like available, whatever, like cleared out spots in the mountain, you can put on those special, uh, special terrain tiles and score even more victory points. But yeah, so like I said, there is a uniqueness of this game of how you actually get resources and Oh man, what is it called? There's an actual name for it. Uh, in the Hall of the Mountain King. It is called... I don't remember. Um, yeah, you form it. I mean, it's a pyramid, but that's not what they call it. But essentially, so you're you're getting these different types of trolls, and there are different levels of them, and you're forming a pyramid. So on the far right side, you can see that... Um, you have your starting trolls, and as you draft, or not draft, as you pick new trolls, you put them above it, above two, and then there's a cascading effect. So the one that you place, you get its resources, and then you get the two that are under it. And the game ends whenever you have a total, whenever you place the very tip of the pyramid. So you're you have to be smart about which trolls you actually want to activate because they're only going to get limited um, activations. Uh, and I just find that extremely fascinating. It's kind of another like slight mini game of how you're going to get the resources you need to be able to continue placing the polyomino styles and how you're going to move shrines around. It's a, uh, yeah. I mean, this one is just incredibly solid. Like you can utilize. There are spell cards that you can use that uh, obviously give you a benefit if you use it. And yeah, it's like not that um it's not that difficult the variety of the points of the shrines is random there's these uh just point value tokens that you shuffle and put randomly out on the board so there's the four different types of terrain you can see the dark gray light gray red and orange and yellow so that would be five not four and there's the three different types of shrines so it's like if you have like if you get into the yellow area and you place a blue shrine, that might be a lot of points for you, but you have to get there. So it's a it's a good one. This one's really solid. I need to try their uh, Fall of the Mountain King, which is a prequel to the theme. But yeah, haven't tried it yet. So yeah, all right. That's my number eighty six. All right. Well, my number 86 is a new one. Um, is the new one to this list. Cool. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be one of those. You know, we talked about the last video about new ones jumping in and them staying in. Because um, this game or is... How, or a new one coming in if it rises. Right, right. Normally this they one... come in and it's like super high and then they fall. Right. This is a scenario-based solo-only game. 
that uh, the theme is fine. I mean, I'm not into this certain theme as much as I am another version of it, but uh, but I got it mainly because it was solo and the and um, it intrigues me. I've played it through about half the scenarios, and that is. Batman, oh, Dark Knight Returns. Um, this is strict from Cryptozoic Games, so I mean, take it what you will from that. Yeah, I'm not a huge Batman guy, so that was another thing that's kind of. Um, but being solo only, and it's got all these cool scenarios that you, you know, it, what the whole point of the Dark Knight Returns is that he's he's retired and he's gotten pulled back out of retirement to find that Gotham is kind of all raggedy and shitty again and he's yeah. trying to do some stuff but uh you know it's this is one of those that it was a they have a deluxe version for the kickstarter that has minis and stuff i don't have that i just have the standees because it's one of those games once you play through the scenarios i don't know how much replayability there necessarily will be for it mm -hmm. um the board is kind of weird looking as you can see oh um, yeah weird but uh so yeah, I mean the the cool thing they they do the gimmick thing because there's a lot of different dice in this, and I don't think this picture shows. I think that's them in that little red cup, but there's these blue dice that they're six sided dice, but only four sides of them have anything on them because there's little bat wings that put it okay. on the side, so they're like bat dice. Oh, also, oh, that's right, yeah, you know, and stuff like that. So it's a gimmicky thing, and and it it mainly is on this list at this point because like I said, it's solo. I'm playing through once the campaign is or the scenarios are done. It's probably going to be one of those that gets forgotten, but uh, there's enough gameplay in it though. I mean, I've played it. I've gotten a lot of play out of it. So it's definitely worth the money. I wouldn't do the mm -hmm. deluxe for the minis my crap because you know, but, uh, but yeah, oh, you know, just... the, the, the bottom left has those dice. Oh, there they are. Yes. God. Yeah. <laughs> They're like bang pow dice and all this different stuff, and it's that's funny because it's this is strictly from the comic book stuff. I mean, that's where yeah. they're taking all this stuff from, and and uh, but you know, it's 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 good if you're in wanting a good solo game to get some time, you know, some gameplay in. This is definitely one to give it a shot because it's relatively inexpensive, you know, for mm -hmm. the time you get out of it. Um, it plays like a lot of the other cryptozoic games. You know, there's there you're gonna have your your scenario thing is going to have your leader and you're going to try to take down the leader, you know, whether it's two face or Joker or whoever else is you're battling in it. Um, it kind of has that same, I mean, the, if you like DC deck building game, I mean, you can, you, it kind of has that same feel, even though it's not the same kind of game, okay. you know? So, you know, I get a lot of comparisons with this and like rebirth, that DC deck on the game Rebirth that usually right. is on my list. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. Batman right. Dark Knight Returns. Give it a shot if you're looking for Solo. Yeah, and I guess if you really like Batman. Or that, yeah. All right. Yeah, there's some weird influx of, like, Batman-themed games coming out, uh, which is just kind of odd. I mean, I guess, like, there was the Gotham, like, the, the big one where they had, like, the horrendous rule book that so no one played their game which yep. they i think they've done a reprint or they're going to to fix the rule book but then you have the portal games which is batman as the detective series and then i guess this one so yep. i don't know just it's not a lot of games coming out but this is weird that there are so many uh all at once but i don't know people like batman i'm i'm whatever on it <laughs> all right my number 85 is the second new one on this list. Uh, this is another... It technically can be played with multiple people. I think there's a way you can play free-for-all, and there's a way you can do teams. But like the only way I would play it is uh, as 1v1. And this is a chess-style game with a magical theme over it. Um, and that is Mythic Mischief, um, which is a mouthful to say. But yeah, so this is a game where you are a particular click um, of whether that be vampires or trolls or wizards or witches or whatever. And you have uh, different 
special abilities than everyone else. Everyone has kind of like a similar way to move and a similar like uh, common actions, but uh, kind of how you go about doing certain things is a little bit different between each faction. You know, this is showing some of the expansions of ghosts and trolls and and stuff. But uh, overall, you're trying to be the first one to get 10 points. And if uh, the before lunch and after lunch phase ends, you just want to be the one with the most points. And so you have three different people in your click that you can control, like at any given time. If you're moving five spaces, you can move, you can mix and match on who you're moving. And uh, basically what you do is you are given, um, you're trying to collect tombs from this library. And as you collect those, you can increase the value of these dice and these dice are a little weird you don't roll them or anything they're just kind of like a tick reminder so if you put in like let's say for the ghost there's the one and two if you put in a tomb there it's going to bump those dice up so that means you would it could bump it up from a three to a two so instead of having three movement spaces you can now do five it's your faction getting stronger but really kind of what you're doing is you're trying to move people or move your opponent in certain ways that will get them caught by the tomb keeper in the middle and if you can do that because at the end of your turn the tomb keeper moves if he goes and lands um and hits your opponent you gain a point and your opponent loses a point so there's just a lot of thought process here of how you're trying to utilize your abilities to where at the end of your turn you're giving your opponent less optimal ways to mess with you. Uh, and the fact that every faction plays completely different is just, is, is really good. Like everyone has a special ability and everyone has a once per like round ability that you can do, or really it's kind of a one-time ability, but you can get it back. Um, Yeah. I mean, I was just kind of taken aback by this one. I think it's incredibly strategic, super fun. The solo mode is surprisingly good, too. Uh, but not one that I would, like, play instead of the base game or instead of the multiplayer, because there's just something about that head-to-head -head kind of thought process. And, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I plan on doing, actually, a tournament of this one, because uh, I think that could be pretty fun and not overly long. Right, just because there's the uh, the six, seven different factions. How long yeah. does it? How long does the game take? About an hour. <clears throat> okay, maybe. Yeah, solo mode, a little bit diff, a little bit less. All uh, right, but in in the head to head, it's like it felt like about an hour to do the two phases because you have the before lunch where the tomb keeper moves kind of quickly. It's really just for you to try and build up for the after lunch that um uh um they are really just kind of a lot more strategic gotcha that's my number 85 right. mythic mischief all right my number 85 is the game i know you don't like um but uh it's always been on my list. It used to be really high. I think one of the first couple times we did this list and then the last four years, you know, it was 81 then 63 then 49 last year down to 85 this year. I think it's just because it hasn't been played this year. Um, but uh, this is a great game that I love playing with. You know, four or five people is probably the best number for it. And that is Spartacus, <clears throat> a game of blood and treachery. Um, the more people you can play this with, the better, just because it gets... it. it yeah, makes misery loves super, company. It's, <laughs> the game, well, no, it's just... it. It just the, the, the style of game this is, the more people, the better, just because of the screwing over. Yeah, it's, like, it's you can't true. really hammer on one person as much because there's more mm -hmm. people to keep an eye on. Um, but, uh, yeah, this one is still just awesome to bring. You know, where I'm having a gathering um, with some of my... Uh, college friends and stuff and i'm bringing this to play with them and you know it's just going to be it'll be interesting just to see how that goes because a lot of them don't play games like like this before so we'll right see you just how... have a highlight reel of all the sex scenes from the show playing on loop in the I, background I, I actually just bought the entire series on blu-ray <laughs> did you really <laughs> yeah there's only like 20 bucks you know <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> they couldn't they basically couldn't give it away <laughs> oh, i, I like the show it was fine but but um but yeah, it's a it's a uh, 
one of those games that has the different, you know, there's solid different phases to it. You know, there's, you can openly lie in this. There's no, no rules with any of that stuff. You can backstab, lie, cheat, do whatever the hell you want to do. Um, you're trying to win by getting the most, um, I guess I can't remember what's called prestige, I guess, whatever that is at the very top of each of the player boards. Um, cause you can choose how long of a game you want to play. If you want short, medium, long, um, each each dominus has a has their own special abilities which is handy too um uh the expansions add more of those more gladiators more items all that stuff all of that culminates in a uh there's there's a lot of uh betting in this game not betting like uh, auction style stuff um and if you can auction high enough to host the games then you'll get like a, one of those uh, victory points and then you you actually have the power to invite certain players to the games and then they get to choose you know which gladiators go in and then it's just fistfuls of dice after that to see who wins um there are miracles that happen you know i've i've had major characters slain in, in these things just because of bad dice rolling mm-hmm. um but uh, and the, that's the other thing when the, when the battle is going, if you see in the t- corners of each of those boards, you know, there's a window where people can bet, you know, if there's going to be a decapitation, if there's going to be an injury, if there's going to be, you know, victory, stuff like that. Um, and that those different things happen depending on how many dice remain after the final attack. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's this is just one of those fun um I'm not going to say party style, but it's a fun, like beer and pretzels, I guess, game, you know, like you yeah. sit down and drinking beer, just fucking around with your uh, friends and, and stuff like that. And more times than not, this game has come down to the final battle to see who wins and everything. So, um, yeah, this is just one that'll always be, they came out with a second edition. I don't like the second edition. I prefer the, the art and the style of this one more. Uh, yeah. The second so- edition, I I'm amazed they even made. Yeah, like I wonder how well it did because I don't even think it made any expansions for it. I think the expansions might have been included. Oh, maybe. okay, maybe I'm not sure about that because I didn't really pay any attention. That would have been smart on them to do, just do yeah. the one. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, they um, this game is like a perfect example of how far we've come <laughs> in game design because you don't see games like this made anymore. No, no, like it's uh. Which is weird because this is like your pure Meritrash game, but now you just see kind of a lot more hybrids. Like the the line between Euro and Ameritrash is very blurred now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you don't really see a whole lot of roll to resolve. Uh, at least it's not the games that I play, I guess. So maybe they are still being made, and right, you know, they're running rampant. But maybe I just don't see them. Well, and they made the the second edition got rid of the. Um, kind of the slave, uh, ah, part of it because like like sense. this this one when it came out, you know, had the whole seventeen plus age yeah. thing on it and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean, yeah. you don't really see TV shows like this being made anymore, right? Like this is definitely your kind of gaudy HBO. Like HBO was known for these kinds of shows back in the day. I mean, even early Game of Thrones around this time was kind of like it, and they toned it down. Yeah. Um. So it's just interesting. Yep. All right. My number 84 fell drastically. It was number 23 last year. So it fell 61 spots. Um, And I could definitely pinpoint why I'm actually still in the middle of my series for this. Um, I will be very surprised to see if this game actually stays on the list after I finish it, because I don't know how much the replayability is. Um. And it's based off of my favorite video game, and that is Bloodborne. Uh, Bloodborne, the board game, is uh, basically a pretty good recreation of the video game. Like, I think Simon did a did a really good job at capturing, uh, you know, Bloodborne uh, in a board game style uh, a lot more than Steam Forge Games has done with Dark Souls and Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, the 
overall shtick of this is that you're going through different scenarios. You can, if you get the all in, you can go from the start of the game to the end of the game and hit all the beats that the video game does. Um, what's very interesting about this is obviously the trick weapons that you have and the combat is entirely card based. So you're uh, doing a slight deck building to increase. That's how you level up uh, to increase your uh, the way your deck functions to be, uh, better work with the trick weapon that you're using. And for that, I think it does a really good job. The scenarios of late have been kind of hit or miss. Like they ha each have three chapters. And the latest box I did, which is a cool moment in the video game, the chapters just sucked. In fact, I found the very first chapter was virtually broken. Like I, if if the randomness of the tiles don't come out a certain way, you actually cannot progress. And um, and I feel like there was kind of the, that's showing its head a lot more. Like the base game is extremely solid, um, and it just seems like as Simon is you know want to do, they didn't fine tune it with all the expansions that they got. Um, but yeah, like currently my wife is painting all the minis, and that amplifies it a lot. I think this game works really well especially solo because it's a solo video game so like yeah it's just what's also very weird especially on camera which is where i'm a lot more conscious of it is whenever you get to the boss fights like the boss fights are cinematic but only for like the player because there's not a whole lot of maneuvering around the board it doesn't do the boss fights like dark souls does where you actually have to get to its blind spot move around and fight it and it has different sectors and stuff it's all card based so the you're basically just playing a kind of like strategic card card play to try and overcome the boss, but you don't move around all that much. It's just big boss mini and then you, and you're just kind of there. So, so yeah, like I, I love this game because of obviously Bloodborne being my favorite video game. Um, and I think for the most part, this game does it really well, but it's like, well, once I'm done, I don't like in the video game you pick the weapon. I mean you can obviously play and level up to the uh, weapon that you want to run through, but then you go to all the bosses with that weapon and that build that you've done. In the board game you don't do that like you're not progressively getting better as the game goes on, so you pick a different weapon each time you do a a scenario. So it's like, well, it doesn't have the replayability to be like, oh, I want to try and play this with this weapon the whole time. So still really hope they do the expansion like the hunters dlc or the old hunters dlc because that's where all my favorite bosses from the video game are but we shall see what they do um and as of right now it's at 84 all right well my number 84 also has been taking a mighty plunge <laughs> um a nose dive yeah well it was 18 then 24 then 32 last year so it kind of did like what this did and fell off just really tanked <laughs> it's another simon game um okay and it's one it, it, and it's That's only funny. fallen it's not that i dislike this game any more than i did back then it's just i have i think four campaigns going in this game all at once and we just didn't get to the table oh. to to uh play right now I, and i have all the crap for it i just need to get it out more um so it's not really the fault of the game um, and that is Archbia Quest. And that is, dang, I couldn't remember in time. What was that stupid dice game of this? Oh, Masmora. <laughs> yeah, and that is Masmora. <laughs> Masmora sucked. <laughs> we played that, and I was just like, that was horrible. Like, what is this game? <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, but yeah, Arcadia Quest is one of those, um, in my mind, uh, one of Simon's kind of classic ones that has stood the test of time for the most part um back when they were actually making really solid stuff that wasn't zombie side all the time but yeah. uh but yeah um well i guess i i guess i gotta hold back because death may die they've done that so I, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll take i'll take that back but, but anyway arcadia quest you know it I think they what they needed to do to keep this game going was come out with some sort of a cooperative mode other than because in the Inferno deal, they had those dragon boxes that you could play cooperatively with. Um, I wish they would have come out with some sort of a cooperative version to, to play this as mm -hmm. just because 
you know, but this, that's one reason why my wife likes this, I think, because it's got the, she hates co- cooperative games. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's got your uh, chibi minis. Again, take it or leave it with what it is, but it's a fun game. You, you choose your three characters. Um, you can power them up and, and equip them as you see fit. Um, mm-hmm. Each scenario that goes on, um, there's three objectives generally. One of them is there's two environmental ones and then one PVP one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and you have to do a PVP one. So you actually have to openly try to kill at least one character from another team to get that part done. And then you have to do one of the environmental uh, goals as well. Um, you kind of I, want to, though, because don't you get a benefit if you complete like a certain one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you're like scenario. the first one, you get like a master of the hammers or something like yeah. that. Or just there's just <clears throat> different stuff that hands on. But I think the reason that this game. I also like this is because where it is scenario and campaign based, like each campaign is six games. That's it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, so it's one of the, that's why I have four different campaigns going because, you know, there's tons of heroes, but Hey, you know, you run through six games of this, you're done with the campaign. And then, yeah, I can't remember. Can you change your group from scenario to scenario or are you're not you supposed have... to? That's, okay, why, that's, I have, that's why I have four going. Cause ah. You know, it's we're trying to. I want to mess with different characters and different yeah. builds per se. So yeah, um, and I don't have like I had everything for this game, even the uh, the newest stuff, the Inferno stuff. But I ended up selling it off because I didn't care for it a whole lot. Yeah, um, it try it started going away from what Arcadia Quest was in my eyes so yeah, they did get kind of weird with it didn't they yeah so so like i have the this box and then like to be on the grave you know i didn't do anything with i don't have the writers that was stupid um i don't have the pets you know it's just like that i have this and be on the grave that's plenty of game in there to go plenty of replayability and and uh i foresee this if i can just get a damn thing to the table it'll go back it'll start climbing back up but for now other stuff is bypassed it. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely one I've cooled on. I used to really not like it, but <clears throat> it's not it's not bad. Right. Um, it's definitely I'll, I'll I prefer this kind of a Mary Trash over um Spartacus. Yeah. Stuff. So so yeah. All right. My number eighty three uh is the new one to the list. This is the last new one for this segment. And uh yeah, this one just really blew me away, even though it has the most boring theme imaginable, but the gameplay is just so solid. And that is Carnegie. Interesting. <clears throat> so I don't know anything about this uh designer. I don't know anything about this publisher. Um You know the artist though. I do know the artist. You know tool uh kills it. Uh, in fact, actually, uh, hold on, I, I might be lying. I think I do know this designer. Um, he did Black Angel. That's right. Oh, okay. Uh, and Twa, but I haven't played Twa. And Ginkopolis. Um, but I know Black Angel. Uh, yeah, so Carnegie is your, basically, you're not playing as Andrew Carnegie, but you're kind of doing what he, he is doing. Is you're trying to get a lot of uh, renown and stuff and then eventually um like donate to a bunch of charities by the end of the game and so you're building up a business that has different um like four different tracks that you can go on on the side of your board that you can level up and that allows you to kind of place those types of buildings in various uh locations of the map it has a weird kind of ticket to ride power grid feel ticket to ride really only because you're trying to make those buildings connect to major cities and power grid because of the cities again but you're utilizing different workers on uh on your main business board uh to power up that ability and whenever you do it, you can send them on missions to the different regions of the country to uh, get you money or get you victory points. Um, but what's really cool about this game is it's one of those where it's like one person picks the action and then everyone else follows suit. So whenever you're picking an action, you're kind of trying to think of, okay, I, am I going to get the most out of this? Do I pick this action because I know my opponents can't actually do anything with it? It's uh 
Yeah, I mean, it's a thinker, and it's also a very weird kind of paced game because in terms of victory points, you do not get much, like, throughout the game. Like, you can, my solo game, I got, like, 40 points, but that was my main goal was just, just to see how many victory points I can get throughout the game, and my final score ended up being, like, 130. I gained 40 points throughout the game and then got a, got 90 uh, by endgame scoring, which is appropriate to Andrew Carnegie. It's like, well, yeah, he wasn't really known much, you know, throughout his life, but he became extremely famous by the end of it whenever he donated all of his money. So, yeah, this one is just, it doesn't, it's not a looker by any means. It looks the most boring. The theme is the most boring, but yeah, it's also one of those heavier Euros that is short. It's about an hour to play, hour and a half. That's cool. And uh, and yeah, like this one's really good. I highly recommend it. So that's my number 83. So my number 83, I am combining a few ver- versions of this game into one. Um, that's kind of what I did last, last year um, okay. and the year before a little bit. There's been a couple versions come out. Since then, one of which we are actually running a tournament on right now, um, and that oh, okay. is Dice Throne. I kind of glumped in you know, Marvel and all that stuff. They're all the same game. Just, they are, yeah. Just put together. So, so Dice Throne in general. Um, it was, let's see, 33 four years ago, 27, 55 last year, 83 this year. Um, is that because you've lost every Marvel <laughs> dice throwing no. game we played? No, no. It's just one v one games. Like, like I don't know. Like, I like. I didn't really take. I, I found a tough time trying to figure out if I wanted to put dice throwing adventures uh, on this list. I with I would have assumed you lumped it in with this. Well, it's different though. It's not it the one v one. It's 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 actually a board game like crawl, <clears throat> but. So it may be its own thing uh, at another point, but but um one v one games right now just kind of they're good. I, that's still my top one hundred, but uh, you know, I the only time I ever play this game is with you. Yeah. So and we've been playing Marvel and stuff like that. So um, the production of this is how this world, you yeah. know, with the way they do all the characters and everything. Um. And then, okay, so this is the the Marvel stuff. Nice. But um, the 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 way that they just came up with the idea to have the player boards there, you know, it has all the information on the board, you know, um, and the little the little card that you get has all the the fact and, and all that stuff mm-hmm. about the characters. There's not a lot of rule book looking in this game. Um, because everything. No. Like, Although there are quite a few nuances of like there are, yeah, <laughs> how damage is dealt. Yeah, the yeah the the direct damage and mm-hmm. and it's all like, that, oh, is that defendable. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, but you know it's it's a uh, it it's just neat how they have you know the special dice and I like how the Thor character has that <laughs> the metal the metal Mjolnir and all that yeah. stuff and and everything, but. Uh, but yeah, this one's one, you know, it gets played. Like I said, we've been playing it, you know, this this past year. It's just mm-hmm. one of those things that 1v1 <clears throat> don't don't hold up on my list as well as they probably would have. Yeah, because um, you pretty much just pick one person to play them with and like, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, they held tournaments for this game. I've just never oh, yeah. been like when I go to uh when I go to Origins next summer, I may bring my stuff just in case because I think they have a tournament at the major ones generally. But, but, uh, yeah, I would love to actually. I know. So, someone commented on my discussion on the main tournament I did for this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, apparently, all the people, well, we did a ranking of all the characters and all the ones that were at the bottom. Roxley's actually making an update pack, almost like a patch because they're not as good and it's widely known they're not as good. Um, but yeah, I mean, there I, are people saying that like high tournament players, like they're. I, I'm not saying there's not strategy in this game, um, but yeah, I, I would love to see like an actual like like good tournament player just to see how they play. Um, it's strategy, like there is strategy in poker. It's there's the luck of what you draw, the luck of what you roll. Right, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Is like 
Yeah, because I mean, it's it seems like when people are saying there's high strategy, it's like, well, sure. I mean, there's still randomness in like magic, but there's deck construction in that. There right. isn't any in here. So you have the randomness of your deck as long and the randomness of your dice. So it's like, I don't know, maybe that's just people commenting and being a little bit more elitist. Like, no, this game actually has a high level of strategy. It's like, um, no, it doesn't. It, I'm not yeah. saying it doesn't have any. Yeah, uh, it very much does, but. Let's 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 calm down. Well, and I have because uh, the the newest ones that came out, the Santa Claus and Krampus, I got that set, and it actually they had the pack of those upgrade character cards. The, oh, they did. Oh, yeah. Okay. You, you could you could pay to get uh, those cards. Okay. And they, I think they even have the PDFs on their site for the updated stuff too. Cool. But, so I have those to upgrade. It was like the vampire and vampire okay. tactician. Yeah, huntress. Yeah, those those I were think the were like the three up. that were just bad. Yeah. So there's three there's three new cards that you just totally replace the old ones that okay. have and stuff. that's cool. Like, I mean, I still kind of have a problem with it. It's like it's nice that they did that, but at the same time, it's not the same as like a video game patch. It's like I still have to pay for you to fix your game. That's annoying. Yeah, like it needs to be a free thing. I get they can't well, really do it for free, yeah. but well, this was free if you back the Santa Claus stuff. The update pack think. was free. Yeah, I think I think it came with the people that that. But you had to back the Santa Krampus Claus. Santa Claus thing, right? And I think there was something there was something with it because they were, I don't know, I don't know the specifics. I'm not gonna sure sure say the wrong thing, but yeah. I, there was something where you were able just to get it if you did oh, something. Okay, I'm well then, sure. cool, cool. Yeah. yeah, if you can just email and be like, hey, can I get this? And they send it to you, then awesome. Yeah, something like that. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. anyway, they're out there. Yeah, this is uh, nowhere on my list. It wasn't. I'm pretty sure it wasn't even considered. Um, not because I don't like this game. Um, like I said, I don't. I didn't consider for this year. I didn't consider games I no longer own. Right. And I played this game. I stupidly did a fucking double elimination tournament <laughs> for this, and that was that was to that was my fault. I can't fault the game for that. But after 30 <laughs> games of this, I'm fucking over it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um. Like we did the Marvel Dice Throne, and we just I'm like, you know what, me and you, I can't put my friend through this. I'll I'll put you through it, yeah. and single elimination, and that's it. I'm and even then, like after the first round, I was like, I don't want to play Dice Throne anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll finish it, especially if I'm on the sexy win streak that I am. Yeah. Just <laughs> through no strategy of my own, just because it's like, wow, Yahtzee, all sixes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am. But not until I talk about my number 82, which I am the only person that likes this game. It uh, rose this year. I don't even know why it rose. Uh, it was 107 last year. So it rose back into the top 100, and it was 70 in 2020. So it fell significantly uh, from one year to the next, and then it rose significantly. Don't know why. I haven't played it. It's probably since 2020, but it's still here, and that is oh, dear Feudum! Lord. Yeah, <laughs> bringing it back <laughs> just to talk about it. Um, I, can't t I couldn't tell you why at all this rose, I think, just my headspace might have maybe comparing it to a bunch of lower games that clearly weren't making the top 100 caused it to be an 82. I can't find a single person who wants to play this game with me. Um, and this box is not in any way reflective of what the gameplay actually is. I was talking about how roll camera was like, oh yeah, it's a whimsical theme, but it's a strategy dice game. This is a very whimsical high fantasy game with the most uh, like the utmost seriousness of you know medieval like medieval times um i wish this picture showed the uh the actual guilds because there's six different guilds in this game that's where a crux of the strategy is is you you have these guilds that have a push pull mechanism and they push their resources and stuff into the next guild and then they pull from another guild. So it's like you have the farm that has resources that uh, those resources get sold to the shop. The shop stuff gets sold to the al you know, the alchemy. Uh, the and then it just goes on and on like that in this loop. It's a brilliant design. Um, 
and they have these monsters that are barely in it because you can get a quest to kill one. Um, they have different ways of travel, which is the I just it's not easy at all. On this map though, you can actually see they have uh you could see the little rivers, like the little waves in the river. That means you can travel by boat. <laughs> they have these these little um uh where are they? Yeah, these little bird things, those arrows at the very bottom that's showing from like the pink location to that uh bluish gray location. Yeah, those. That means you can travel by ship. They're the tiniest fucking icons, but they have meaning. Everything has a meaning. That pink uh octagonal or one, two, three, four, uh, not octagonal, um whatever, hexagon. Hexagon, yes. Um shows that that person owns that location, but the green one next to it shows that it's a surf. And there's a, there's a, there's like rules for that. It's been so long since I've played this game, honestly, that I don't really remember the nuances like of like specifics. But it's I it just works. It works. I maybe if I play it again, I'll be like, I'm done. But it's uh, I really like it. I really like it. Bringing it back into the top 100. Um, I don't hear anyone talking about this game at all. It's five years <laughs> old at this point. <laughs> There's been a few expansions to it. Uh, I despise the solo variant for it, but yeah, they have some some pretty pretty cool expansions. They're all relatively smaller, um, like, but they're still going on that weird whimsical theme. There's a small expansion that adds squirrels and nuts or conifers or whatever they're called. I think conifers are the trees, but then they. The squirrels release nuts that are a resource. You have to feed your people, of course. Um, the <laughs> dice-looking things are not dice. They're workers of a various guild. Because you're trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You're going to talk about Lorenzo Il Magnifico. At no, least I know. I'm just joking. Cool. <laughs> you're going to make fun of my next game anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. If you want to, like, just give a heavy Euro game a shot, like... But do not let this art or these monsters fool you. This game is not light in any way. So that's my number 82, Feudum. All right. Well, my number 82 was 92 last year and was 119 the year before that. So it keeps going keeps up. Climbing. I, All right. I finally picked up the last expansion for this that I was missing. This game is far out of print, so it's expensive as hell um, to get this stuff. Um it's based on a video game IP, and it's a deck building game. Oh, okay. And that's the Resident <laughs> Evil deck building game. Um, this is, I owned this a long time ago, and I got rid of it. Um, I'm a diehard Resident Evil fan anyway, so I was like, I'm going to give that another try, and got it back and expensively got it back and uh and i just like playing it i don't know if it's just the nostalgia of it or what but but um you pretty much are just playing the playing the video game for the most part you they 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 do this stupid thing like i like this game solo because they bring in that whole semi-cooperative aspect where you know you're trying to you know, go through the story mode um which is the main version of the game and uh, you're, you, every time you kill an infected, you get a decoration. And then whoever whoever has the most decorations at the end of the game wins. Don't play. That, that's okay. kind of like that whole. It's, it's kind of like that whole Marvel Legendary. You know, yeah. like they had the victory points. Who cares about the victory points? You just try to beat the scenario. That's 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 why this is good. Just playing it purely co op and don't worry about the victory point stuff. But um, it is a. Uh, it's your pure builder you know it has all that video game art and all that stuff and you pick one of the characters there's tons of different characters out there i have all the expansions that add outbreak and mercenaries and alliances and all this different stuff can you play as tofu uh no well then you don't have all the characters <laughs> but <laughs> well all the characters that are available in this game i have all the characters <laughs> in print um, but anyway, um, so the characters all have different hit points and different and some different abilities. You start off, everybody starts off with a 10 card deck, just like a normal deck builder that has ammunition and weapons and stuff like that. 
And then you are going to earn coins and different stuff, build up, buy more weapons to put in your deck or buy different um, actions or crap. The, the trick with this game is ammo is used. So like yeah. when you shoot your guns, you're actually using the ammo. So you have to keep finding ammo to put out and stuff. So it's not just like a t- normal deck builder where you just, I'm going to throw out my Uzi and just mow down all these guys. And it's good. You have to actually have to be cognizant of your ammo usage. Yeah. I was going to um, ask how they use that. Cause that's a staple of Resi right, games. Right. And it's, and it's, it's in the deck, you know, I mean, you buy it and you can also find it within the deck and everything. There's a boss that generally each of them, each deal of this, of the uh, story mode will get you to, um, but there's so many damn cards in this game and you choose like that's kind of this layout that they have right here you know like you're going to choose what weapons you want out there you're going to choose the actions you want out there you know your your herbs and your ammunition and stuff so you get to kind of customize how you put stuff out unless the scenario tells you otherwise okay um but it's just one of those games i you know if you like resident evil it's you've got to give it a shot at least once you know, it's definitely a data deck builder. I'm not going to deny that, but <laughs> but it's uh, it's still really really cool. You know, and and they've added all kinds of so many cards. There's so much variation to this game. Is this that, Cryptozoic uh, as well? No, it's actually it was actually um, uh, Bandai. I mean, oh, it's not okay. You see, I mean, that's yeah, there's that's oh, it was yeah, strictly it. from Band, Bandai. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you would think. It would be something that Cryptozoic... Exactly, like that yeah, take. that's why. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, this game's so far out of print. I mean, like like everything I have, I could sell for like 700 bucks. It sells Jeez. for, uh, <laughs> you know, and stuff. People yeah. still buy it. It's nuts. But but, uh, but anyway, you know, Resident Evil deck building game, I'm keeping this one alive because I'm probably the only one that likes this game too. <laughs> probably, yeah. Uh, on a side note, super stoked for the Resident Evil 4 remake. Hell yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's my favorite one of them all exactly so i'm very very excited uh hopefully hopefully it's good all <laughs> right <clears throat> and the last one for this segment ending off on an extremely high but also depressing note because this game used to be my favorite game of all time it is the <laughs> one that got me into the hobby um god well over five years ago at this point because i was gonna even go way back because i thought in 2017 it was my my number one but it was my number two in 2017 that's whenever it got surpassed uh talking about a very serious medieval game of feudum this is the actual high fantasy uh not serious game of talisman talisman the magical quest game by fantasy flight this was back when fantasy flight made games (laughs) yeah (laughs) and uh yeah so this one uh, still going strong. Still in my uh, in my top 100. Last year it was 65, and in 2020 it was 78. So yeah, last year so it fell 16 spots from last year. I don't think I will ever get this off of my top 100. This is just one of those that it hits every element of fantasy for me because uh, I really do like high fantasy. So many expansions to this of the different four regions of the map. Um, yeah, it's just like soup. <laughs> so <Christ>. many cards. <laughs> uh, luckily, I was actually able. Uh, thank God, Etsy exists because I now have a storage crate for this that does a really good job. It's just, yeah, it's it's this is roll to move uh, with obviously mitigation that you can get from different cards, but um, you're just traversing the land, getting items and followers, and killing enemies to get. Um, to level up to eventually make your way to the middle of the board to get the crown of command, which is how you end the game because first person to get there casts a spell that uh, you roll a die and it, it, a certain result will hit everyone for a uh, damage. And basically if you're killed by that, you're out of the game. Otherwise, if you're killed throughout the game, you can come back. It's a, uh, yeah, I mean, everyone I've shown this to, there's just a lot of nostalgia here, but everyone I've recently shown this to also love it. There's just something about it that people, like, I don't know like I don't know what the hate for this game is. It seems like it's kind of one of those that people hate it just because the internet told them to hate it. Um, but... I, think, I think it's because, and I, I used to say this myself, 
but I'd be a hypocrite if I use this as the reason I don't like it. It's because of the roll and move. Um, because I like flying frog, flying frog <laughs> games. Yeah. Um, and their roll and move stuff. So I, I think that was the only reason. Yeah. I yeah. And maybe it. just because it's it's pure chaos. It's pure it randomness is. of just you can be turned into a frog at any point, and you lose all everything. You can be attacked, and people can steal stuff from you. Um. Although that happens kind of less whenever whenever you have the expansions. But yeah, you have the the city you can go to with shops. You can get the dungeon to kill high-level monsters. You can get the, the wildlands, which uh, <clears throat> deals with fate. There's a bunch of expansions for this, and I have every single one of them. Although it's still being made. Pe uh, Pegasus Spiel is the one who took the rights over for this, and they've reprinted everything. So. Right. Although what's funny, it's a uh, it's Talisman the Revited Edition <laughs> instead of the Revised yeah. Edition. Oh, uh, oh yep. I think the wow. other page had it right, didn't it? Oh, yep. It was just the yeah, no, it's there. So yeah, so for some reason it's <laughs> different there. Uh, but yeah, like this one, it just it does it for me. I it has every type of fantasy in it that, or at least high fantasy, like this isn't your dark right. gothic kind of fantasy. Right. So. This is a beer and pretzels game. Like yours is Spartacus. This is definitely that for me. Um, and yeah, so I love it. I love it, even though it's fallen <laughs> since my number one to two to now eighty one. Uh, yeah. it'll probably hover around the sixties to eighties, I think. So that's my number eighty one. All right. Well, my number eighty one is a game that's been on my list for quite a while. Um, it's a little bit of a lighter game. Um, it, last year it was 64, 61 prior to that and 52 prior to that. It's just slipping a little bit. I don't have the expansion that came out a couple of years ago yet. So maybe that's, maybe that's one of the reasons, you know, that, uh, it's kind of slipped cause it's not really super new. Um, and that is mm. Baron Park. Um, I really like the simplicity of this game. Um, and, you know, now that I've think about it more, like I can kind of see where Arc Nova in a way almost kind of does a little bit of this, you know, only it's on the uh, high, heavier end just because uh -huh. of the, the Tetris style uh, pieces. Oh, and stuff. okay. But yeah, I forgot about that part of Arc Nova. I, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I'm, I'm not meaning <laughs> it's close to it at all. I'm just saying like, like this game relies on all those uh, Tetris sized pieces that you're putting on your board and trying to fit them in there and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, just like you're doing with your zoo and Arc Nova, but, but uh, with this game, you know, you start off with a, a, a little square park board and you're going to be placing uh, tiles on your board. And if you place those tile and it covers up certain symbols, then that lets you take certain actions. Um, and if you can completely cir uh, circle one of these uh, little hexagon squares. If you can completely surround it, then you'll get a, a little bear statue that's worth mm -hmm. victory points. And they they start off the first one to get it, it's worth more, and then so on and so forth. It kind of goes down from there. But uh, you can also expand your park and keep doing stuff like that. The expansion adds um, like monorails and grizzly bears and stuff like that. It's called the Bad News Bears expansion or something like that. But yeah. <clears throat> but um anyway this is just it's 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 kind of a puzzly game you're just trying to figure out the best way to lay your tiles down to maximize what you can get um and uh what you can build and stuff like that and it's a you know it's it's a it's a solid solid game you know it's nice yeah. light fair and doesn't game doesn't take very long at all yeah that's true yeah it's a solid polyomino gateway style game not bad with very cute bears on it Yes. All right, everyone. That was it for this segment. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed all 20 games that we talked about. And there are obviously plenty more to come. So let us know what you think of these games in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching. And I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon. And any help is truly appreciated. 
Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.